I gotta wear a mask to work on my boat. I gotta wear a mask because of COVID. I gotta wear a mask because they got so much burning going on there. I don't feel safe to breathe. The end of the world, it's coming. Just kidding, I gotta get the boat done. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. A lot of people seem quite concerned whether this boat after the hurricane is gonna hold together for me. I got one definite answer for you. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Okay, maybe I do have an idea. When I was designing my own boat and I talked to a lot of engineers and they said they could engineer to a certain degree of force that the boat could handle a certain force in certain directions. When it, the boat is falling off a wave or, or a breaking wave is breaking on top of the boat and it's sliding down a wave, it, it, it's really hard to predict what the actual forces on the boat will be and where. And so that's really what the unknown is. And, and so they, they, they engineer for uh, the best case scenario or the, the worst case scenario, and then they use a safety margin to be able to determine where it should be. So really the only thing you can do is take a look at, well, what are the primary components and are the primary components intact and are they ready to go? So let's walk around the boat. I want to do a damage assessment. Now, a lot of people have been asking, hey, you know, how bad is the boat damaged? Where is it damaged? What all do you have to do? So we're going to do a damage assessment of the whole boat. I'm going to kind of show you what needs to be fixed and what my plan is and then what's in shape and then why uh, this boat. Antares, uh, I think it's Ted Clements, I think this is guy, the guy's name who designed it, did an awesome job in designing this boat and engineering it so that it's very strong. It's a very well-built boat. And then the, the construction methods that they used are, are very good to prevent a lot of stuff from happening. And that's one of the reasons when I looked at this boat, even though it looked horrible, I could tell it had good bones underneath. So let's take a look at some of those. Here we are underneath the boat. And the boat has three major structural bulkheads in it. There's one right across here in the back. Uh, then the primary bulkhead, which comes across uh, essentially where the salon doors are to get into the, to get into the cabin. Finally, uh, there is the mast bulkhead that sits across there. What this has in addition to this is this little, this little section here. Now this is both a drain component, but it's also a structural component. Uh, this is uh, uh, like a backbone that ties all the bulkheads together that prevents uh, additional flex and allows the bulkheads to work together. That's part of the reason that makes this boat very strong. Another thumbs up for the designer on this. Now we're down in the hole, looking at the farthest most aft bulkhead. Uh, and this is it here. And so you'll notice that all of the bulkheads have easy access. Well, nothing is covered up by interior liners, uh, none of the structural stuff. There's interior liners in the showers, but none of the structural stuff has interior liners, so we have good access to it all. You can see the bonding in here, how well this is bonded all the way across and all the way down, all the way to the transverse. Uh, no cracks, nothing, no flex, the additional bulkheads, everything is all squared away. Now this is the good side of the boat. It didn't get the major damage, but we can see all the way down. Everything is good. Everything is good. I mean, no hairline cracks, nothing. And no D-lamb on this. It's all solid as a rock. Let's go check out the bad side. So this section here, this is by far the worst of the boat. We're gonna take, a, gonna get a close up and take a look, but this is really the starboard aft side. And what happened, and I believe this is where another catamaran, supposedly, I haven't, I've never seen pictures and it's, it's just not real clear, but landed upside down on top of it. And so it smashed down this side here and then up, uh, up there, it smashed the, the cabin down. And so this is the primary. And then I think what happened, and we'll take a closer look, this crack here, now this is just a small crack. I say small, it's still a fairly good sized crack. But this crack here, I think they, they, I think happened when they were trying to salvage it. And I'll show you some clues why. Um, but so this is, this is by far the biggest project I'm gonna have to do. All this is, this whole side's gotta get ripped out. I'm considering this part here to be still part of number one, where the, the back got pushed down and the front got pushed up from this. Um, all this, this is all gotta be rebuilt. This is by far the biggest 
work I got to do on the whole boat in this whole section. So basically it's all coming out. It's all going to get come out, come out and I'm just going to reform the new one out of foam and glass it just like new. Um, and here's where we've got damage up into here, up into the bulkhead, and I'll show you inside where we tore it apart. I've already pulled this section out uh, to start getting uh, ready to fix it, but this is still part what I'm considering the number one damage on the boat. So the second biggest area that I need to fix is right here in the cabin top, and I'm considering this the entire cabin top with, with the second area. So we got the first area back there in the aft quarter where it's where it's busted, and this is the just the um, starboard side of the cabin top. And it's really the, the whole cabin top. And so we, we've seen in the other videos where I've already started to repair this, where it's all busted up, and I've got this. And I would say I'm about half done uh, with the initial fiberglass repair. Now that doesn't include um, painting or anything like that. The real reason that um, I'm only half done is because I need to get underneath here done. And so where those cracks are, all this glass, I need to put new layers of glass there. Uh, where it's just foam, I need to put uh, layers of glass there as well as there's a crack under this and then you can see this area here all right so as we go down here to the kitchen and you'll notice this side of the boat is actually in pretty good shape this side of the boat was not underwater but um behind this panel is where we can see access and it's actually underneath i got the the jib in here but uh, so you can't get under but when you go under this bed you can see where this bulkhead is tabbed uh, down below to the whole base here we pull this panel and you can see where this is tabbed in and we can check to make sure that there's no tab there's no flexing or cracking or anything uh, along any of the bulkheads where they attach i'm going to try to show you at least this side of where the bulkhead that mast bulkhead is so that you can see uh, what it looks like and down here as we look uh, all the tabbing is good, but I guess here I just want to show you, we have full access to it. And through that compartment there, uh, and around, we basically have full access to our primary bulkhead here to make sure that everything is solid and that that takes the load. And so this, what, what, what happens with this is the mast has a huge force pushing down on the boat. And that huge force pushing down on the boat is distributed by this bulkhead and then also by that transverse bulkhead that runs this way. And then those bulkheads transfer to the outside. And then that outside piece essentially is taking the load up this way. Let's look at the chain plate. Now your chain plate is one of your main things because that's where all the load from the mast is transferring back up or back down from the mast. Uh, that's pulling up here with extreme force. Uh, and that's, that's what causes the hole to buckle. And so this guy here, uh, it's not a little chain plate. You can look at the size of my hand. Uh, it's a big chain plate, and I'm going to replace this metal. I think this is just aluminum. Uh, I'll pull it off and, and just make fabricate a new one for that because this one's corroded. Uh, but this here is super thick, solid fiberglass. It has a laminate schedule that shows how all these layers, and is not. Uh, this is where it's important that you're not just using woven cloth. It's all unidirectional um, cloth to, to properly load to the correct location on the whole side of the boat. And then that side of the boat transfers to this bulkhead, to the other bulkheads all the way up. And so if you end up with any damage or any flex in here, right, then that's what happens. The boat is just gonna bow. And so then the boat can bow this way, the boat can bow this way. Anything that's pulling from that, the stays, from this stay, from the, um, the fore stay, or from um, the mast pushing down. And so those are the forces that you're, it's constantly trying to collapse your boat. And in fact, in some monohulls, they will actually bow as, as, as much as several inches as you tighten up the forestay and the backstay, you can actually get the boat to bow. Um, yeah, fiberglass flexes, and we covered that, you know, 5% before it's gonna break. And so a couple percent is okay to, to flex, but then you get past that, and all of a sudden, the parts in the boat that are most brittle are going to start to break first. Which, if you have polyester resin, that's probably what's going to break first. There's a lot that you have to be aware of. But as you're aware of those and you check everything, and basically, uh, I'm not an engineer, but 
I'm building back to that's why I got the factory specs. That's why I'm using all the factory materials all the way down to the same brands because as long as I feel confident, I can build it back so that it is as strong as factory using the same materials. So then as long as they engineered it well, which this boat I feel is engineered very well, I feel like I am not going to have any more problems with this boat than you would have out of a brand new boat. All right, back in the kitchen, let's take a look under this floorboard for spot number three. You can see where that punched a hole. I don't know what it was, if it was a piling. That's my guess is it was a piling, but it's interesting because we've got the hole in the bottom of the boat under the water line, but yet this is not the side that got the, um, that got wet. The other side was underwater, but didn't have the hole under the water line. This side had the hole under the water line, but wasn't underwater. Now there's lots of localized damage like this. That's just basically, it's not even cracked through the core, but all of this has to be ground back all the way around into a big patch, replace all the glass make it look good there are tons of these guys all over the boat i say tons there's probably not that many probably 10 10 or 15 spots like this but each one of those you know that's another day i wasn't going to put a video out this week uh but i'm going to try to get try to get this out to you guys uh to, to kind of share what i'm doing i'm as you know i'm a software developer and i've got a new product that we're launching that i've been working on for about seven or eight months we're launching it next week and so for the next two weeks, I'm going to be super busy. So I'm not sure that I'll get much done on the boat, but I'm not giving up on the boat and I'm not going away. So I'll see you next time. Lots more boat work coming up. So be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already.